Whoa, guys. What an insane moment. Ilya Teporia absolutely shocked the MMA world by knocking Max Holloway out in the third round. And I'm going to be real with you guys. I thought this day would never come. Like, it's like witnessing something we thought was impossible finally happen. Because for the longest time, I thought, and I felt like a lot of us thought, if Dustin Poirier couldn't knock out Max, most people would assume that it was never going to be done. But Deporia proved he's built different. That knockout was just a punch. It was just a full force blast that sent Max across the octagon. Toporia's timing, power, and precision came together in a way that even the commentators were left speechless. And all those fans who kept calling Toporia overrated, you know the haters that are online and saying that you can't count Max out and that he's a bad stylistic matchup, well guess what? He had the last laugh. Now he's taken down the two of the greatest featherweight fighters of all time with a knockout. Of course the first one is Alex Volkanovski in his previous fight and now his masterpiece against Holloway. But man, it's tough not to feel bad for Max Holloway after that knockout from Ilya Teporia. Holloway's chin has been one of the best chins in MMA in general. I mean for years, this guy has been absorbing incredible punishment over his career. But this loss? This loss might signal a turning point. Toporia's power and his precision were a perfect storm, landing a left hook that dropped Max in a way we haven't seen it before. Fans have long speculated about how long Holloway's durability could last. And while his chin didn't outright fail, the moment suggests it's finally taking a toll. Because let's be honest here, this knockout could have lasting effects, with Teporia showing that even the toughest fighters reach a breaking point. Holloway's willingness to brawl and take shots, which made him a fan favorite, might be unsustainable moving forward. If his chin doesn't fully recover, we could potentially see another Chuck Liddell. And what I mean by that is somebody who had an iron chin that suddenly just gave out. And the same thing could happen to Max Holloway. That's the concerning part about this entire thing, you know? With that being said, I kind of want to talk about how the fight went and give my honest thoughts on it. So, in the first round, we saw Teporia coming out very aggressively, attempting to control the center and land powerful strikes. But Holloway effectively maintained distance with a series of kicks. Teporia managed to score a takedown, which is something I figured that he was going to use, but Holloway quickly returned to his feet. And honestly, that didn't surprise me. Max never really gets controlled for too long, and I doubt that Ilya was going to be the guy who does it, you know? But I did in fact think he was going to use his striking with his grappling to win this fight. In general, it didn't go exactly like that, but here's the breakdown. As the round progressed, both fighters exchanged strikes with Holloway staying active and evades while Teporia targeted Holloway's lead leg and closed the distance. At one point, Teporia threw a shot that caused Max to slip, and he ended the round with another takedown, taking Holloway's back. However, time ran out before Teporia can fully capitalize or make any significant moves. And honestly, I thought Max Holloway took that round. Two judges scored that round a 10-9 for Ilya Teporia while one gave it to Max, which honestly surprised me. It seemed like the judges may have thought Max was dropped by Teporia, even though it looked more like a slip because it was a slip. I kind of get it though, they don't have instant replay, which is what the commentators mentioned. Still though, a quick glance up could have clarified it, but it is what it is. But anyways, I just thought Max won that round because he landed more damage overall. Now in the second round, Max Holly definitely started to turn things around. He was finding his rhythm with clean, precise boxing, and he had Teporia adjusting his usual aggressive style. Holloway kept Teporia at range with a strong jab and different calf kicks, showcasing impressive footwork to keep his distance. His range control forced Teporia to be more calculated and less aggressive than usual leading to more intense tactical exchange than in the first round. But then Teporia adapted by focusing on body shots and hooks and with those leg kicks. Ilya was just trying to break through Holloway's defense. While Holloway kept the exchange high pace and landed mixes of punches and kicks, Teporia's power shots were starting to connect, especially towards the end of the round. Both fighters ended the round with a solid back and forth, and you can really feel the intensity building up with each exchange. However, strategy was to wear Teporia down with volume and movement, while Teporia looked to capitalize on an opening with his power shots, setting up for the explosive third round where he ultimately got the finish. And honestly, I saw that round going to Ilya Teporia as well, especially since damage is the top priority in MMA scoring. 
From the start, I figured Tapuria would edge it by consistently landing the harder and more impactful shots in each round. Max definitely brought the volume and landed plenty of strikes, but in terms of the judging criteria, damage carries the most weight. Because of that, I thought it was pretty clear that Tapuria won this round. By round 3, Max was landing oblique kicks effectively, giving Tapuria some issues and disrupting his rhythm. But Ilya kept pressing forward, showing no sign of slowing down. He eventually connected with a powerful right hand that visibly stunned Holloway, setting up the finishing sequence. Toporia immediately followed up with a massive left hook that dropped Max, leading to ground and pound that forced the referee to step in at a minute and 34 seconds of the third round. This win was huge for Toporia, marking the first time Holloway has ever been knocked out in his career, which is a testament to Toporia's power and his precision. It's not easy to break through Holloway's resilience, and this finish solidified Toporia as the real deal. Like I mentioned earlier, you cannot say anything bad about Toporia now. He's the real deal. He's him, and I'm calling it right now. Toporia is going to be a huge star. All of us thought it was going to be Sean O'Malley. Obviously, he fumbled it. And it looks like the true star is going to be Toporia after all. And look, man, he has it all. The perfect style to draw in the casual viewers. He knocks out almost everyone he faces. He talks trash. And he carries himself with that cocky attitude. He's the next big star in the UFC. No doubt about that. Honestly, I don't see anyone in this weight class who can stop him. People forget he can also grapple too. He showed that when he started his MMA career. He just happened to fell in love with the striking and for good reason too, since he's knocking people out left and right. He's scary and this is the next generation of MMA right here. With that being said, it looks like we're getting Volkanovski versus Taporia too. It looks like it's on the horizon and I've got to say, I'm just not sold on this rematch, okay? Volkanovski has been a dominant champion, no doubt about it. But, I don't think anything changes in this second go around. Taporia's pressure, power, and boxing were all a huge issue for Volkanovski. And I could see him getting folded even quicker this time. Plus, stylistically, it's a rough matchup for Volk. Since Taporia doesn't give much room for Volk's typical rhythm and striking pace. Instead, I'd rather see Taporia face someone like Diego Lopez. Lopez has the aggressiveness and creativity to make this fight interesting, and he's an exciting contender in his own right. With how Taporia looked though, it's hard to see anyone stopping him in the division anytime soon. As for Max Holloway, that last knockout was brutal, and I'd rather see him take a solid 6-9 to nine months off to fully recover. Max has been through some serious wars, and a layoff is well deserved. Personally, I think it might be time for him to move back to lightweight, you know, 155. It seems a lot better fit for his durability and his endurance, and his last stint there showed his real promise. Imagine a comeback fight against someone like Dan Hooker. That would be fireworks. Hooker brings relentless forward pressure and high volume, making it a great matchup for Max to ease back in and showcase his skills at a weight class that suits him better. But anyways guys, that's my entire thoughts on the fight and what's next for either man. What do you guys think of the entire situation? Let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like always guys, I'll see you guys on my next one.